Throughout the hundreds of millions of years of life evolving on our little blue planet, there have been some absolutely monstrous creatures that have sprung up from time to time. Some of them lived in the distant past, visible to us only through interpretations of the fossil record, while others live right alongside us to this present day. And in today's video, we're going to explore the largest animals that have ever graced the surface of our planet, including the most massive of dinosaurs and whales, enormous flying reptiles, and ancient scorpions so large you'll be grateful that they are extinct. The ocean has long been home to some of the world's largest animals. After all, the buoyancy of water means that an animal can expend less energy supporting a much higher weight than it would on land. A few million years ago, the group of aquatic mammals known as baleen whales began swelling in size. This surge in weight is believed to have coincided with the cooling of the Earth's climate and a subsequent increase in plankton and krill density along ocean currents. These dense concentrations of nutrition were often separated by long distances, meaning larger whales with more fat reserves were more likely to survive the long trips and evolutionary pressure which continued to increase their size over many generations. The shifting size also happened to coincide with the extinction of the ocean's apex predator at the time, the Megalodon, adding to the theories that long distance travel and fat reserves were now more important than speed. As a result of all of this, baleen whales became the largest animals on the planet, a title over which they hold to this day. King among them is the blue whale. It's pretty common knowledge that the blue whale is the largest animal on the planet and likely the largest in history, but a some perspective is needed to truly understand just how colossal they are. The International Whaling Commission has recorded 88 individual whales longer than 30 meters or 98 feet. If you're curious, that makes it longer than six Toyota Corollas placed in a row front to back. As for weight, the maximum estimate reaches about 200 tons, making it about as heavy as 30 fully grown African elephants, which are the largest animal on land today. Its heart is about the size and weight of a piano, with tubes large enough for a child to crawl through, and its heart rate can drop to just two beats per minute to conserve oxygen at significant depths. But perhaps its most shocking dimension can be found in its immense mouth. Just opening and closing this mouth to feed burns about 1,900 calories, and it opens so wide that another blue whale could swim right into it. In a single gulp, they can consume nearly half a million calories worth of krill. As with many giants of the ocean, blue whales also live a relatively long life. By measuring layers of earwax, a whale's age can be determined with surprising accuracy, and the oldest ever recorded was 110 years old. Leaving the ocean behind, animals on land have generally had a tougher time getting to huge sizes throughout history. However, there have been some notable exceptions to this, all of which were dinosaurs. It's no secret that some dinosaurs were massive, but to understand their truly immense scale, we need to put things into some perspective. But first of all, which of the dinosaurs was the largest or the heaviest is a question that doesn't exactly have one single answer. The big issue with fossil interpretation is that often paleontologists are working with incomplete skeletal remains and have to perform, for lack of a better term, a bit of educated guesswork to fill in the blanks, or species, and a subsequent lack of consensus in the scientific community. That said, what we are confident in is that the largest dinosaurs were all sauropods, the iconic herbivores with the long necks and the huge tails. The largest complete sauropod skeleton that we've ever uncovered belonged to the species Giraffatian, and it weighs around 30 tons. This is already a few times heavier than anything walking on land in our day and age, but it's far from the largest creature to stomp around during the Jurassic. For example, there's the Argentiosaurus, which is believed to have reached upward of 100 tons. It's generally regarded as the largest confirmed sauropod, but even this giant may have been dwarfed by another creature. This is the Bruhathkosaurus, potentially the largest animal to not just walk on land, but if the upper estimates are to be believed, the largest animal to have ever lived on planet Earth. The first specimen was discovered in the late 1970s in southern India, and immediately the researchers were blown away by its immense size. It wasn't a complete skeleton but the fossilized remains included bones from the hips, legs, forearms, and vertebrae. Even compared to other sauropods, these bones were massive. A shin bone, for instance, was two meters long, nearly 30% larger than the shin of Argentinosaurus. Similar increases in size were seen with the femur fragments and the vertebrae. Scaling these proportional differences out to the entire body, and you end up with a dinosaur of unparalleled, colossal size. One estimate in 2001 put its maximum weight at 220 tons, which 
which would make it the heaviest animal of all time. In the two decades since then, a number of other wildly varying estimates have been put forward, usually depending on which sauropod the bones are compared with. One group of researchers concluded that the shin bone was actually a deteriorating femur, dropping the weight estimate to a mere 50 tons. Most recently, a 2023 review suggested that its maximum weight was probably around 170 tons, falling a bit short of the largest animal of all time, but still possibly taking the crown as the largest and heaviest animal to walk on land. Unsurprisingly, it's another animal from the age of the dinosaurs that takes the spot as the largest creature to ever take flight. Pterosaurs were a family of flying reptiles, close cousins of dinosaurs, that lived between 65 and 230 million years ago. It's believed that they were the first vertebrates to develop flight, and they quickly came to dominate the skies, and with little competition up in the clouds, some species evolved to be incredibly large. The largest pterosaur was Quetzalcoatlus, named after one of the major gods of the Aztec pantheon. The first bones of this beast were found in Texas in the early 1970s, but soon after, several more fossilized remains were located, including a nearly complete one, putting it on the fast track to officially being classified as its own species. Thanks to so many remains being unearthed, its size is pretty well agreed on in the world of paleontology. It likely had a maximum weight of 550 pounds or 250 kilos. This isn't terribly heavy compared to anything that we've talked about previously today, but remember, this thing could fly. The real shocker comes when you look at its wingspan, which was an incredible 36 feet, that's 11 meters. With its wings fully extended in flight and its long beak pointed forward, this would hilariously make it about the same size as a Lockheed Martin F-35. But perhaps even more terrifying than its huge silhouette in the sky would be its formidable size when standing on the ground. Based on the structure of its hands and arms, it's believed that this creature could commonly stand on all fours when on the ground and would have towered over any human alive today with a standing shoulder height of around 10 feet or 3 meters. But for all we know about its size, we aren't actually sure what this giant liked to eat. The obvious visual similarities to modern birds like the pelican had early researchers believing that its diet was mainly comprised of fish. However, more recent investigations have found that any form of fish feeding, such as skimming the water during low flight, would expend far too much energy from an animal this size and wouldn't be worth the caloric cost. Not to mention, many of the fossilized remains have been hundreds of miles away from any ancient lake beds or seas, which doesn't line up with a proposed seafood diet. One modern theory posits that instead of fish, these creatures ate smaller animals on land. Hunting the smaller types of dinosaur babies and eating eggs out of their nests would have been easy pickings, and they could leap into the air and flap their massive wings to quickly escape any potential danger that could come from standing on solid ground for too long. While it wasn't technically a bird, its wings and feathery appearance might have you wondering what the largest bird in history was. And that award belongs to a type of flightless bird known as greater elephant birds. When they were still around, greater elephant birds were a force to be reckoned with on their home island of Madagascar. Resembling an ostrich or emu in appearance, they towered over the landscape with a standing height rivaling the Quetzalcoatlus and had a maximum weight of around 2,000 pounds or about 900 kilos. These are by far the largest birds in all of history. But what sets them apart from many of the other extinct creatures that we've covered so far is that their species didn't come to an end hundreds of millions of years ago. It's believed that they didn't go extinct until surprisingly recently in 1000 AD, and probably as a result of extensive hunting by none other than us human beings. And for our final section today, we're going to venture away from the animals that hold records for the largest and heaviest, and instead take a look at the long extinct creepy critters that will certainly make your skin crawl. Fortunately for all of us alive today, insects and arachnids are quite small compared to us. Sure, a few of them may be venomous, but it's nothing you can't outrun or stomp on with a good thick shoe. Travel back 300 million years, however, and the odds are going to be far less in your favor. The Carboniferous was a period in Earth's distant past long before even dinosaurs had evolved. One notable thing about this time was that it was when terrestrial plant life really took off, with primitive trees and bushes sprouting up and covering the landscape in lush foliage. This explosion of plant life had the side effect of pumping tons of oxygen into the air, putting the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere up to about 30% at its peak. That's 10% higher than it is today. Insects don't have lungs like the rest of us. They intake air instead through special tubes on their skin. Because of this anatomy, and lack of large predators, an increased amount of oxygen meant that insects could sustain larger and larger 
sizes. For instance, take Meganisoptera, commonly known as griffinflies. Essentially, these were giant dragonflies with wingspans of about 28 inches or 71 centimeters. This makes them 10 to 15 times larger than dragonflies today. Since they were likely predators, like their descendants, one can only imagine the size of their prey and just how fast they could fly. On the grounds, there were even more monstrosities. Perhaps the most horrifying of these was the Arthropleura, a giant ancestor of millipedes. These things grew up to a maximum length of 8 feet and 2 inches, or about 2.5 meters, and were about as wide as a human being. These are the largest known land invertebrates of all time, and we're actually quite confident in their size thanks to extensive fossilized remains, tracks they left behind, and even exoskeletons that they shed. Along with these, there were giant cockroaches several times the size of anything seen today, huge mayflies, and one of the largest scorpions to ever live, which reached a staggering length of 27 inches or 68 centimeters. The end of the Carboniferous period saw the oxygen levels drop back to where they are today. This, along with a growing number of predators, saw the size of insects rapidly decrease to the sizes that they would remain at until today.